Imagine living in a home where robots vacuum your carpets, press your clothes, and even mix you a cocktail. Well, servants could already be a thing of the past for some rich homeowners. Now, so-called smart homes are being built that can draw your curtains, brew your coffee, and change the lighting in your rooms. Construction firms in Dubai are offering such high-tech homes targeted at the wealthy residents of the United Arab Emirates. They offer lifestyle choices that, until now, have only been seen in science fiction films. We have a robot which does the vacuum cleaning, we have a robot which does the mopping in the toilets and the kitchens, and we even have a robot in the apartment which will do the pressing of your shirts and, uh, and jackets. So by the time you come back home, it's spotlessly clean and everything is taken care of for you. Some apartments can even offer robot dogs to entertain the children and to go on patrol while you're at work, photographing intruders and emailing the images directly to the police. Others will have robot bartenders serving up everything from a cappuccino to a cocktail. Simply tap in an order and the machine will swing into action. But smart homes don't come cheap, with some costing in excess of 3 million US dollars. Their walls conceal hundreds of meters of cabling that connect every electrical appliance to a computerized mainframe. Light, motion and temperature sensors then feed information into the system, allowing you to control it by a touchscreen computer or remote. As well as taking direction, smart homes can think. If we have the air conditioning on, for example, and there is a movement in the house, the temperature is kept at your comfort uh, level. If you leave the house, the system will know that there is nobody in the home and put the system and the, and the air conditioning at a low consumption level where you will save a lot of energy. But perhaps the biggest law for buyers is that smart homes can be controlled when you're out and about. Remote access technology allows you to monitor your home while you're away or even contact it to prepare for your arrival. If you have a child sleeping in one of the rooms, through your PDA you can watch, you can see the child if he wakes up, if he makes any move and you want to go and check it. So you can do it whether you're in the house or you're outside the house. And also you can, you know, through the remote you can manage of the applications. Uh, you can even start your coffee before you, you, know, you leave the office or uh, you know, uh, put your microwave on or any, any other electrical appliance which is linked to the application. But what happens if the whole system breaks down? There's also a, a central control unit in the building itself which can override any of the, of the features that we will have in the, in the building. So uh, it won't be doomsday uh, scenario where the building takes over control and it's actually uh, you know, uh, trying to kill people like in one of the famous uh, Hollywood movies. But it's actually a much simpler uh, use of technology which is integrating everything into one system which can be switched off and on as per the requirement. But does everyone want a robot-controlled future? I think it's a good idea for working people, you know, because at least they come home seeing everything ready for them. But if I'm not working, I wouldn't, like, want to live in such an apartment. Because, like, I'll be living doing nothing, practically. And we're humans, we have to walk and move. I'm not sure if uh, I want people to have access to my email or to know what if I've got orange juice in the fridge or you know my comings and goings, what time I arrive and leave. I'm actually quite a private person. Despite some people's reservations, an estimated 10% of Dubai's new buildings already incorporate some smart technologies. Of course, having a home that does all the housework for you gives you more time to do a little shopping. And the top draw show at London's Olympia Exhibition Hall gives you the inside track on what the major stores and boutiques will have in store in the coming weeks. Last time round, 800 companies displayed thousands of products. A jury of buyers and journalists handed out awards, with exhibitors getting extra points for innovation, healthiness and environmental awareness. Take this popcorn, for example, which won the award for best food range. It's popcorn with a difference, made in London, not the USA. It's lighter and healthier than normal popcorn because it's cooked in hot air, not hot oil. And it has added flavors, just like potato crisps. It's so different, in fact, that it's a gourmet popcorn. It's been really exciting. We're really lucky and it's, it is great to have that affirmation that you know we're on the right track. We knew it ourselves, but it's, it's always nice to have some of the best foodies in the industry um, acknowledge that as well.
many of the products from handmade handkerchiefs to innovative tableware featured the very best in international design, jewellery and fashion. But one of the most original exhibitors of all was promoting some of the simplest gift ideas. Maison Bengal is a small fair trade company selling handmade houseware and bags from Bangladesh. The company's owner, Sheena Day, used to live there, working for a non-governmental organization in family planning. She now goes back every year, traveling to outlying villages where she works closely with the women's cooperatives who make her products. The best-selling items are these jute baskets which I bring in, um, and the best-selling ones of the baskets tend to be the natural ones that haven't been dyed. So basically the women who live in remote parts of Bangladesh go to the nearest market, buy raw jute, which is readily available. It's a sustainable crop that grows every year. They collect the jute, they bring it back to their village on foot, obviously, there is no public transport in the villages. They sit and they plait the jute into a long, 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 long plait. They also import leather, cane and terracotta and try to ensure all their output is geared to Western markets with the aim of promoting a distinctive trading philosophy. I work with NGOs that work with community groups that really have very little access to the outside world, very little access to any form of employment. So extremely poor communities that lack basic services, basic income. But what I found since uh, living out there and working as I do, a lot of the producers have enormous levels of skill in, in crafts, in hand, handwork, handicra handicrafts. Um, and what I basically aim to try and establish is a sustainable market through exhibiting at shows like this, to establish a sustainable market for the traditional skills that these women have. Most of the products on display had a more conventional design background, but the inclusion of Maison Bengal made the point. From gift foods and designer houseware to novelty fashions, the show had something for everyone. The trend-setting products that will become the most sought-after gifts for shoppers for the months to come. Next time on Desire, we sniff out the world's most indulgent delicacies. And a rare treasure from a modern master. We bring you some sterling ideas for table dressing and round it all off with a taste of the world's most expensive ice cream. Life in Germany about the middle of the 16th century and quickly caught on with students moving from one university to another in the course of their academic careers. Their professors and fellow students often made contributions to these pages 